Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Gestalten Podcast. My name is Martin Groschwald and as always, I'm your host of this lovely little design show. And this week, I'm very happy to welcome Holger Hampf, the president of BMW Design Works. And we took the opportunity while he was here in Munich on a business trip, because he's usually based in California, to record this little episode and discuss a little bit about the future of a designer, the expectations of a designer of a future, in particular about transportation and mobility design and how the role of the designer might change. And in the end, we might even ask the question if design work is actually operating already on the level that we expect to be see, to see in the next five to 10 years. So without further ado, enjoy the episode with Holger and let's go. Hello, Holger. Welcome to the Gestalten Podcast. Pleasure to have you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah, it's good. Sun is out. Sun is out. You, we are actually, we're actually here in Munich. Usually you're in California. You're on a, on a visit home at the moment. Uh, and you brought the Californian sun back to Bavaria. And yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to, to have you in the, in the conversation. And you are the president of Design Works. And obviously a lot of people know that Design Works is also affiliated with, uh, BMW. However, we want to talk a little bit more about the role of Design Works overall and uh, what, what it plays and what might it have as in a, a direction of the future of design studios as well. And let me start off with probably the easiest questions you will get for me today. You have been in the States for a few years now. You have a studio in California. You have one over here in Munich as well. For you as a leader in design, what differences do you see between location, cultures, and what is what do you see as your role to to work with all of this to get to the best possible results? I, I, I believe that the environment and the cultural context makes a, a big difference and has a, an influence on how we design and what we design. Um, you know, first of all, uh, I, I think it's in most cases, uh, and this also accounts for design works, um, it's the context of a, a bigger city, a mega city. And if you will, all of these cities, uh, starting in Europe with with Paris, Barcelona, or Munich, um, you know Berlin, uh, compared to Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, New York, and and then Shanghai, Beijing. Um, this is the context the designer is working in, and it obviously has an influence uh, because designers are uh, constant observers. Uh, they run around with open eyes, uh, lots of curiosity. Um, so what you find, um, there is uh, a lot of influence in what we design and, and, and how we design, you know, take for example, scale. Um, it's a very different thing in the U S in California, you know, um, in, in, in the, in the mobility segment, uh, everything is slightly larger, you know, parking a car is a, is an entirely different story. Um, and that influences how you design and how you look at a product, um, and there are, there are very subtle things, I think, that influence us as designers. It's the light uh, that kind of hits the product you're designing. If you talk about a physical product, um, uh, that means that, you know, for me in California, I, I, uh, I often refer to it as like if you clean your glasses, you know, you take a filter off. Uh, it's a different light uh, in which you kind of, um, yeah, look at look at what you do, the work you do. Do you see, in particular with California, but we see this nowadays, of course, with with other locations as well, that outside of the cultural impact, we have tech impact, we have certain kind of trends that are stronger in other in other countries than than let's say in the U.S. But looking at California in particular, we see all these startups. We see the the the, the Northern California Silicon Valley area. If you compare this to your colleagues in, let's say, Munich, for example, or Shanghai, do, do they think, because they're so much part of this tech industry as well, that they think differently about it or that they have a different in, interpretation of how they design them? Because it's very different for us here in, in, in Central Europe to understand how influential Silicon Valley has become if you've actually never been there. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, and first of all, I think uh, tech industry is a very general term, you know, there's like, uh, it, it kind of, it almost, it has widened so much today um, um, that, that, it, uh, that it needs uh, further 
um, definition of what you mean when you say tech industry. If you mean Silicon Valley specifically and the uh, the industry, uh, kind of the the, the manufacturers and uh, you know the innovators, the tech innovators, um, there's certainly an influence there. Uh, but I I would say today. Um, a kind of uh, all of these boundaries between design and tech and innovation have blurred quite a bit you know if you if you look at car companies for example and how we as automotive designers are influenced by the tech industry i i think you know the uh, partially it is I, it has become difficult to to say that a certain company is a car company or a tech company or a software company, you know, I think it's it happens all at the same time in a very integrated fashion, at least with the companies, I think, that are successful at doing it. Um, so if if um, if I may say that, you know, in the in the US, you sometimes think some of that gloss is gone. Um, Bay Area is over. Um, and 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 the train has moved on you know you as of late you hear a lot of stories uh, around the us that that kind of you know power lines are causing wildfires and they're far behind um i i would say it's still there and you know even china is still looking towards california and the west coast uh, to to understand what's happening with you know new car companies and startups and so on and, uh, you know, some of them we have to study every day to understand uh, how these things are connected, how uh, software and technology and automotive design uh, is, is hanging together to form this overarching story. So if we take the overall topic of automotive design, expand it a little bit to mobility design, yeah, because obviously nowadays we don't just talk about a car anymore, we talk about all different kind of vehicles that enable us to get from A to B uh, in that context as well. How has the the actual role of a designer changed? Because obviously you started off as a traditional car designer as well. Now you have much more insights on other things as well. If you would kind of summarize it a little bit for the last 10, 15 years, what, what were the major changes that designer had to go through of what is expected from them now? And where do we maybe see this continuing in the next years if, uh, you know, for, 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 for new expectations of designers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually did not start as a car designer. I started as a product designer, as an industry designer, and uh, kind of I... I kind of converted to be more of a car designer. Um, but anyway, I, I think, you know, uh, the answer to your question is really, uh, you know, where do you want me to start? The designer uh, over the last 15 years has, uh, the job of the designer has changed dramatically. Um, I think we have, um, there's a, there's a, there's a completely different expectation of what we bring to the table, what we bring to the, uh, to the party, you know, uh, I would say number one is there, uh, the designer has to bring a much uh, broader understanding of the context. You know, I, I think uh, when we, if we would continue to just uh, design a car um, for, for its aesthetics, you know, we would fail. Uh, so, you know, at DesignWorks specifically, we try to educate uh, um, our creatives to take off the blinders and kind of look around and understand the context in which the car exists and in the future can uh, continue to be successful um, as a product. So um, you you kind of have to observe changing user behaviors, desires and, and needs and so on. And that allows you to design a good product. In order to do so, you kind of need to leave um, that kind of focus and, and kind of widen your, your viewpoint. Um, Number two, and that is related to it, I think a designer is really uh, kind of um, as of late shaking off that 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 kind of um, perception that we um, we are just there to make everything look beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. To to we've talked a much, uh, we talked a lot about you know um, kind of you know the, the cosmetics or the the kind of the surface uh, quality that we um, uh, that we bring. Um, and here I really like also the German word gestalten, basically, which is is funny that it it kind of in it it in incorporates it it uh, has so much more content yeah. to me than designing or giving something shape and form. Um, so I believe the design uh, the designer actually has been successful in shaking that off a bit and kind of saying like you know I'm not only here to make things look pretty. Yeah. Um, 
Thirdly, I, I would say, uh, if I look at, at the entire discussion um, around, you know, circularity and uh, responsibility, sustainability, I believe the designer has to um, um, go about it with much more kind of attention to um, how a product is being put together, the materials that are being used to put it together. Uh, you know, I, I think it almost feels like uh, since I'm doing this uh, um, since since a since a little bit. Uh, of time it feels like it's repetitive we've had that kind of discussion before but it wasn't successful because sustainability and these type of topics they were always uh kind of to the disadvantage of the consumer you know mm -hmm. it was always about giving something up that you actually enjoy uh, especially in automotive you know um you you kind of constantly think like okay this this whole uh, trend of electrification what what's in it for me um, and that is changing, you know, and the designer, I think, also has found ways of combining the two things, of creating very, very emotional and, uh, and you know, desirable products and at the same time do something good for the planet. Um, so, again, it's a responsibility and that's changing. And maybe lastly, I would say that at DesignWorks, we talk a lot about the system uh, of, of kind of understanding more complex uh, assemblies and um, uh, to, to say, okay, let's think less about the artifact uh, and, and think about like how are things hanging together? You know, one of the simplest example, or let's stay with automotive, you know, if we don't think about infrastructure and charging and how to pay for a charge at the same time as we think about the car, the whole thing will uh, fail, you know. So I, I think, again, thinking in systems is becoming very, very important for a designer and um, looking at things um, in parallel, so to say. So if we take that idea a little bit further, because from my observation, I don't necessarily think that in all companies and some companies, as you have mentioned, this role of design, not just as styling but actually as an environment that touches multiple points within a company i, I don't necessarily think we're 100 percent there yet so what what do you still think right now is that the designer has to 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 convince the superiors the bosses the c-levels to say just like okay maybe um, it leads to a, a structural change maybe in companies maybe it leads to something completely different because i if we look at like you know marketing nowadays you still see a design chief standing there explaining the car and the shape and everything like that. But we don't necessarily talk about the environment overall just yet. Is that we that we maybe need to have an increase of intellectual understanding from design or expect more from the designer intellectually to get to this kind of level? Yeah, I think it... it uh maybe it has to do a little bit with that uh, with with the definition that was once coming from uh Hartmut Esslinger frog design that designers are storytellers and you know they're um, best at at kind of you know um spanning the arc of of kind of telling everyone where it starts and where it ends you know and and, and kind of making the connections mm -hmm. um and this is something i i would say is still uh it's still true um um, I, I think maybe the term storytelling in of itself has been overused a bit, but um, I, I think the designer is very well capable to not only visualize a future, but to also talk about the future in a very convincing way. And 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 that is probably uh, one of these things that that it, it feels very natural if you hear it from a designer, from a creative, because they almost uh, kind of have lived this future um, mm -hmm. through their through their creations. Um, so I, I feel, yeah, there is there is uh, also a responsibility in that um, that we learn to present and to kind of you know uh, calmly convince an audience that you know this this is very real uh, that what we are putting on the table. Now, you guys at Design Works, of course, you're not just doing cars. You're doing various other things as well. You're working in product design. You're working on digital uh, products. You're working also within architecture. You have this very fun job to do in the sense of like, you know, you see all of these things. Um, and now, how does this 
affect you? How does this inspire you? Maybe how does it also open up your eyes to then say, it's like, hey, you know, I understand that obviously within automotive design, we have a very complex product, but maybe we can learn more from other companies or other areas or from collaborations that come with that. Uh, how do you deal with that? Because I always have the feeling that, especially from product design, like, oh yeah, but the product is not as complex as the car. But there must be quite a lot of things that you have learned from non-car work that you could actually apply on the automotive transportation world. Um, yeah, it, it, um, it's, I think, one of the great things about design works. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we are working right now on a, on a super interesting project that is called Architecture and Mobility. And, and it goes uh, very deep in, in kind of investigating how actually architecture and the car or any type of urban mobility concept fit together you know and how they play uh, with each other um so definitely the work is very inspiring but i would say where it starts is you have to um uh, kind of awake uh like awake the uh wake the interest in your design team to kind of open up and embrace um to look at many of these different um you know, disciplines and, and industries. Um, so it starts with like someone who, um, who comes to your organization and is very determined to become a good car designer or something. And the next thing is basically you have to push the reset button and say like, well, let's forget about that for a second and look at all these other things at your disposal at design works, you know, the opportunity of working with an architect or a fashion designer and so on, you know, opens uh, your pores to kind of, you know, uh, to, to, uh, yeah, uh, take in uh, inspirations that at the end actually allow you to create something truly new. Um, because otherwise you're just continuing the paddling the same water and, you know, maybe your sketch is a little more beautiful than the sketch of your neighbor and so on. Um, so we're trying to educate our teams at DesignWorks uh, to embrace, uh, you know, a, a cross-discipline le learning, you know, to say, you know, there, there's much to learn if you if you have a, a good talk or, or a chat with a designer who is actually uh, foreign to automotive design, for example, you know. And um, we're building new relationships, we're building new teams. And um, I, I think at the end, the collaboration and the cross-discipline collaboration is the path to success for us to create something new. Um, it brings newness, it brings integration, and and at the end, again, this uh, uh, system thinking, this talent to system think, yeah. If we take this a little bit further now, we talk about vehicles, yeah, we see the developments of autonomous drive, we see, you know, alternative ways of getting from A to B, electric, um, hydrogen, all these kind of things now come into play. Do you actually think that if you look at let's say design works that you see the role of the actual vehicle design designer changing because it might become easier to to do a car so that let's say the designers you are working with compared to maybe i don't want to call them the traditional but the very specialist car designers are maybe a little bit better equipped to adjust to this kind of new future and you know new regulations that might come into play because i I understand 100% what you're saying with the architecture and all these kind of things, but this also needs to understand then, okay, like what is the vehicle in the future? Is it actually going to be like what we have right now? Or can it be something completely different? You know, we see all these, I call them toasters, of course, but maybe what's the, what's the future of that? And maybe it doesn't need to be done by a traditional vehicle designer, but it could be coming from, you know, an architectural collaboration. Oh, well, I believe it's a it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, if if you if you also look at this uh, never ending uh, question, uh, if if a specialist is the better choice uh, than a generalist, um, you know, the, um, that's something uh, you know we can we can talk about. I believe at the end you need both. You need the designer who actually. Um, uh, pays close attention to aesthetics and aerodynamics and and just the shape of of a uh, a vessel you're moving around in, 
Uh, on the other hand, like you said, you know, um, uh, technology, you know, reading the environment and and the car moving through that environment in a more intelligent way and taking uh, taking tasks off of you so that you can do other things um, is 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 something that I also want the designer to be attentive to um, because I think at the end. Um, you have to find a ways of of blending these new technologies that certainly have an influence on the automotive design as we know it um, and blend it with what we generally um, define as being aesthetically pleasing, you know. Um, take a small sports car or something or or a very low car for example at the end you know integrating battery technology and integrating some of the sensors and cameras and and uh, and, and other uh, equipment in front and back and sides you know will challenge the car designer more to kind of think differently about it um, nevertheless, I think our aesthetic definition of certain things will not change so quickly. We will expect that, you know, it still will look the same or it will still kind of satisfy this need for, you know, let's say to, 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 uh, to drive and own something very sporty. Uh, um, so I think it's interesting that, you know, if we, if we, um, if we also talk about this topic of the specialist, you need that person to kind of really understand where we are coming from, the history of automotive design in a certain way, and someone who also can bring in the challenges, the challenging aspect of, of you know, new tech and, 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 you know, things that make our cars more intelligent and, yeah, at some point of time, move autonomously. Yeah. So if we go a little bit deeper into this conversation of specialist versus generalist, um, how do you think they can actually coexist in the best possible way? And I'm asking this with a with a specific background. I'm asking this from the idea of um, studying in industrial design, transportation design, those kind of backgrounds. Yeah. So, what kind of expectations do we need to see in those kind of let's say specialists? And we talk about you know aesthetic pleasure for a vehicle, for example. What do we expect from them? And or is it maybe exactly the opposite that we maybe don't need the aesthetic specialism from them but the you know building specialism the production so that we can manufacture these kind of things so you know there's all these different kind of aspects of specialists and stuff and and i think it's a it's an interesting discussion especially from where you're coming from because um you see generalists you see specialists and i think you know you you have almost like a foundation of what maybe the future of vehicle design could be with design work so how 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 do you try to balance that without you know getting into any kind of conflict like I said before, I think to me it's less a question of specialist versus generalist. I think it's uh, it's a discussion around generalist and specialist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's how these two disciplines, and certainly uh, there's a very different uh, skill set and competence uh, kind of in each of those uh, words. Um, how you, as a design manager or as a design agency or a company, how you're able to combine the two and get the most out of each of them. Um, because I truly believe that, uh, you know, you need both to be successful. Uh, you need the guy uh, or the person, the, the creative who is, uh, who is very, very versed in, in, in kind of a specific area, the specialists, you know, they they have a, a, a laser sharp, uh, mind on certain areas and they find the very best and also the most aesthetically pleasing solutions mm -hmm. for certain uh, details. However, at the same time, you know, uh, and I mentioned this before, the generalist is maybe the person who is less capable of addressing these micro details in design. However, they are the people that are not wearing blinders and that are kind of running around and kind of sometimes um, try to solve things with a certain naivete. Mm -hmm. You know, they will uh, they will bring in the newness. Um, so to me personally, as a design manager, and I think also something that we kind of do every day at DesignWorks is to um, to find the people that you can put in one and the same room and something awesome comes out of it you know we all know you know doing this long enough that you know you can 
put a couple of people or four people or like a small group of people into the room and either they're kind of ending up having a fight after 10 minutes and you know they don't talk to each other anymore or you get that creative explosion so to your question i think obviously the the ultimate uh kind of uh, satisfaction for me is to see if you put a generalist or a, yeah, a generalist and a specialist into the same room and you see them spin off of each other mm. and kind of you know inspire each other because that's a that's a moment i think in design and creativity where, where you really uh, kind of understand how to kind of you know create a uh, a bigger arc, a, a more holistic story, instead of just like sticking to the micro detail, but don't seeing the big picture or addressing the big picture, but missing the little detail. When we when we take this holistic point of view, because I, I do find this very interesting, and you know, if we take again the idea of a specialist and a generalist towards that as well, design nowadays becomes obviously we talked about this before much more you know, about collaboration as well, collaboration with different departments as well, such as marketing is a big one that obviously is mentioned quite constantly, but we're talking also about collaborations between what you have in your hands. So the physical product, the digital product, the engineering and everything, the branding that goes, goes in there. Now, if we look a little bit ahead into the future and there's a lot of talk about experience as well, um, do you think design can be the one that maybe unites all of this and all of these competencies or at, I don't even want to say lead because I think it's a collaboration in general but guide this collaboration a little bit because at the moment I think a lot of people think oh you know marketing is quite heavy in guiding what should be done but then you have other people in the past that Steve Jobs said just like you know um, we don't need that much marketing because you know the people don't know what they want uh, which is a very design objective in that context so um do you think design can take on that kind of role in larger organizations within vehicles as well? Because that's where it becomes difficult. I think, you know, when we talk about phones, okay, fair enough, but vehicles, it sometimes can be very tricky. So it, I think, you know, fully design led is almost impossible, but a very strong design orientation could be something that could be achieved in the next 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, maybe let me let me try to kind of answer this to to in in two ways. Number one, uh, yes, I believe you know that that you know. Well, first of all, marketing and communication need something to talk about, you know, substance, and that's coming from the design team. So I think working together with um, kind of the the communication arm of of a company, working in a very integrated fashion, makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, you know the. The people that uh, put the story out there that create gravity around a product um, and certainly they're very good at it um, the better you are able to explain to them what your vision was and what you put in front of them um, the better they are able to talk about it um, at the end again you you said experience it is a uh, kind of like it is more and more about um talking about the entire engagement that a customer has with a brand mm. than just the product in of itself you know i think the the um the satisfaction or frustration with a certain brand you know starts long before you own a product or you drive it around you know it starts maybe when you order it or when you look at the the, the web portal for the first time and it ends long after you you know um, um already maybe having switched to a different product you know it's so uh, this kind of arc is something um that i would generally kind of put in uh, uh, like describe uh, with the word experience you know um and uh, that's something that we are paying more and more attention to i i believe you know if if you take the car you know um, offboard uh, has become as important as onboard you know digital experiences in the car um kind of have to work hand in hand fluidly with uh, you know, a digital experience you have you're having on your couch. You know, it's it's uh, it's all connected, and we have to understand that. Um, and you know, communicating that, and 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 not only talking about these core aspects of um, a product, uh, but also being able to zoom out and and kind of find these other aspects that people are interested in. 
uh, is very important. So the, the better the designer explains it to the person that has to communicate it and the, the further kind of we can span the arc, mm -hmm. um, the better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think secondly, I think it's and you've asked like uh, the, if, if, the, uh, if the designer has uh, more of an influence also in the future. I believe one of the things that I'm currently um, um, trying to tackle is, is, is how we can have even more influence uh, over changing cultures. Uh, you know, I, I think we're doing a fairly good job in, in delivering what we are supposed to do. And that is good design, good aesthetics, experience design and, you know, digital, physical, you know, uh, our, our envelope is ever expanding. Um, however, and I said this before, with the way we work, the way we visualize, the way we talk about certain things, I think we can actually have an influence over, over culture, company culture. Um, and here again, there's much talk about, you know, if, if, if we, if you, if you look at certain corporates, you know, um, still to today everything is done waterfall everything is done excel sheet you know it's it's that that kind of you know um project management becomes more and more important but that doesn't mean maintaining an excel sheet this means kind of ensuring that people talk to each other mm -hmm. and design is is really to me at the center of this because uh, yeah i don't know we like to communicate we like to talk we like to describe these things we do and um kind of yeah influencing company culture um just changing the tone a bit um uh you know you know we're experiencing it right now also in bmw you know people have taken off their ties you know they're they're kind of more casual in working with each other and that's the kind of the basis for a successful future you know you have uh you know you have an honest and sometimes even, you know, a conversation with some friction, you know, disagreement mm -hmm. also leads to a better solution at the end. You know, uh, it's 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 not always a, a one way road. It has to kind of go a bit back and forth to arrive at the better result at the end. I, I find this fascinating in, in, in the impact on the on the culture as well. And, uh, you know, be, before we talk about a little bit of just what you know how design works could become a little bit of like the future of maybe a car design i want to just jump quickly into that culture question but how how difficult do you think it is also from a pure you know self-understanding situation as a design department to then say just like look we're not just here to do a, a beautiful car or like a beautiful object we're actually a fundamental point of what the car or like what the company can push towards the future as you mentioned with company culture but many many other things as well this changes the role of design management of design leadership of course drastically as well do you do you think we we will see actually then more sub teams and let's say physical uh, design and like digital design or maybe experience design which was then run by one specific person because th there's so many then touch points to all of that it's almost impossible that just one person could uh, could uh, could fully run it because it's becoming then so complex so how 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 do you see this you know potentially happening in the future we see gm i think have just hired a cxo chief uh, you know experience officer those kind of things coming together i mean these are interesting ideas to be pushed uh, pushed through because if we you know take all this responsibility on design it's not it was it used to be like 10 15 20 years ago which is like oh yeah do a beautiful product this is then becoming much much uh, much different mm -hmm. Well, in one way, I'm 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 surprised that uh, the Design Works business model or the relationship between uh, our parent company BMW Group and Design Works hasn't been kind of copied uh, mm -hmm. many times over. Because I still um, to today, and this is like uh, 25 years into BMW owning Design Works, um, you know, there are not many other companies that have replicated this model. Um, and I'm just saying this because I still um, 100% believe in, in, in this, in the model of, uh, you know, on one hand, having um, deep insights into, um, into the, um, the strategy and uh, um, the, the, the 
principles of, of your um, most important employer or your parent company. And on the other hand, also kind of being given a certain freedom to, you know, work for other companies or to explore and to basically, um, yeah, basically not do everything your parent company mm -hmm. is telling you, you know, and that's kind of in, 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 in kind of a lame terms, it's the difference between a cost center and a profit center. DesignWorks is a profit center. We have to earn our money, yeah. you know, um, and, you know, as a cost, at a cost center, you basically, you get a budget at the beginning of the year and then you kind of work through it. Um, so, you know, with, with that liberty comes a certain responsibility and also certain stress. Uh, when you take the last year, yeah, I, I have to admit it has been very stressful uh, for design works. However, I would, uh, I would always try to maintain that the, the, the freedom that we have in making decisions of what to look at. Mm -hmm. So to your, to your, to the second part of your question in, in kind of who does that, I, um, I maybe uh, believe less in um, in uh, in further distribution of expertise and and kind of chopping chopping this up into uh, different competencies and so on. But I believe in in kind of creating you know smaller task forces uh, like agent teams that are that can be anywhere. They don't even have to be in the places we are currently in. Uh, but you can deploy them in a certain way um, to, yeah, I don't know, a new market like India or something and, and, and say like investigate and bring it home. This is DesignWorks role at the end. We are um, BMW Group Design's outpost and we have to bring home knowledge and uh, we have to bring home what I said in the very beginning, you know, that, that kind of cultural context, that environment uh, that environmental influence and impact on our design teams. So let me come to like the, the last bigger question towards this because this follows up quite nicely. If we pose a very provocative question and say, in all what you have explained so far and the flexibility that you have and let's say the commitment that you also receive from, from BMW as well, you mentioned that you know, you're surprised that not more people have copied that kind of system. Do you actually say that the design work system that you run right now could also work without an internal BMW system so that other companies in the future could say like, maybe we don't need this full internal system, but something that is flexible, something that not just works for us. A little bit more like, you know, um, if we go back in car history, like the carrosserias um, back in the 50s to the 80s, the Zagatos, like the when Pinfarina was in his heyday, where the people went to and just like, no, you, you do it for us. And uh, we want to see what you come up with. We give you all the input that you require. Um, it's almost a little bit like back to the future <laughs> you know, in, in, in those kind of regards. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, since back then, um, you know, things have gotten a lot more complex. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, the car in of itself, one of the most complex uh, products or kind of systems uh, one can uh, one can design or you know and and, and develop um, so i would say it, it needs like i think we've come away from um, the designer signing the sketch and saying like you know i did it uh, we are now uh, kind of understanding that it's not the work of a single person it's always <laughs> You know, and I believe one of my colleagues, Benoit, talked about it. Uh, Benoit Jacob, uh, who I worked with, you know, it's always the work of a of, of a smart group of people that have put their heads together to kind of get the best result. Um, so I think in comparison to uh, the 50s and the 60s, you know, where still that mentality of you know signing for a certain sketch and a certain aesthetic. Um, was kind of the the holy grail in a certain way in in uh, especially in automotive design you know and don't get me wrong i really enjoy looking at this and i i kind of i can i can look at these books and i can really uh yeah get a blast however i think today you know systems have gotten a lot more complex and i would say it needs that 
you know, the kind of the nucleus, the powerhouse that then is maybe fed by the outside with influence and inspiration and, you know, this company like design works. All we're trying to do is to create certain impact in Munich mm -hmm. and say kind of, you know, how can we kind of, you know, um, like push this a little bit more left or right, you know, with our ideas. And that's, uh, you know, it sounds simpler than it is, but, you know, it's, it's, first of all, it's very satisfying. And, uh, to me personally, to the design team, you know, to, to even see kind of that you have the slightest influence over, you know, a corporation of that size, a company, uh, um, and, and, and their products. Um, but at the same time, I also, um, admire you know or, or i understand the complexity i'm dealing with you know and uh, yeah in this way um i believe it's it's a good role it's it's a it's a good role to play and uh, with that also you know the the relationship between uh, design works and bmw group couldn't be a, any better uh, like it, it's really a lot of fun to to work together and uh, like i said before always make sure that you find each other's strengths mm -hmm. and you kind of you use them accordingly thank you very much Holger. it's been a, an absolute pleasure to have you um, but before i let you go as everybody, and you mentioned Benoit uh, obviously earlier as well, and uh, he got three mag magical questions, if we want to call them that way. So personal question number one for you is, which creative mind, and this doesn't need to be somebody coming out of you know the traditional design industry or whatever, has inspired you personally and professionally the most? Oh, which creative mind? Um, you know, I, I personally kind of have many interests uh, in in terms of you know um, uh, creating for an audience um, and, and i always use the two examples you know um, i enjoy good food and i enjoy good music um, and you know i i constantly kind of pull inspiration from a good musician a good band and uh, kind of uh, certain lyrics um, yeah and and uh, I, I cannot even name a specific person um, at this point, but I would say um, true to um, my um, desire to kind of, you know, cast the cast the net wide, wide and, and kind of um, look at architecture, look at music and look at all these different influences and see how they enrich what I do and what we do at DesignWorks. You know, I, yeah, I find new inspiration every day. Cool. Question number two, which project that you have not been part of, and again, doesn't need to be design related, could be anything, would you have absolutely loved to participate in? Um, here I would say it would be something uh, in, in architecture, uh, a building, a museum. Um, you know, I think there are some places that attract audiences to look at art and so on. I would say, I don't know, there, there are a few uh, great museums um, that I would have liked to kind of contribute to uh, a building that, um, you know, becomes a bit of a, yeah, uh, a temple um where where people go to and they enjoy the space and they enjoy looking at uh, the content uh, that's presented there yeah any specific one that comes to mind you know i i, I think I, I have a couple of books about you know the, the the guggenheim museums both in bilbao and in new york uh this type of architecture kind mm -hmm. of inspires me greatly you know um, as of late you know uh, last night i had a business meeting at the bmw welt uh, you know which is you know, you, you kind of approach it with the car, you drive in the underground garage and, and it's still, it kind of, it leaves you speechless for a moment. You know, every time I see it, you know, I find uh, these type of creations that actually have also kind of have a ripple effect and, and kind of influence the, the surrounding area, you know, um, how that thing sits next to the uh, Olympic uh, mm -hmm. Park area. I still find it very inspiring. I agree. I mean, you know, I'm a massive football fan, as you as you can probably see on my wall. Um, so I 100% I, I understand where you're coming from. And last but not least, if I give you a blank check, which car would you buy? Oh, God. <laughs> which car? Um, 
Well, right now it would be a combination, um, as you might guess, you know, it would be a classic car and it would be completely uh, modernized under the hood. Mm -hmm. um, I recently looked at a company in California, you know, in the neighborhood called Zero Labs, you know, they convert a Bronco mm -hmm. uh, and, and make it like a, a high tech product, basically. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, is out of my price range, but um, you know this. This I think I'm, I'm looking forward to this combination of um, of high tech mm -hmm. and and uh, some of what we what we generally find in in some classic automobiles. You know, if I can get both, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all would. We all okay. would. Thank you very much, Holger. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Same for um, me. What I'm gonna What I'm gonna say, obviously, up front is safe travels back to California. Uh, in all this pandemic, it's uh, been fantastic that we had this this sit down here in Munich. Uh, really appreciate it. And to all of our listeners, as always, and I know I repeat myself all the time, but thank you very much for listening. It's been uh, It's been great to have you with us, even only virtually, as always. But um, please do not forget to rate us on iTunes, Spotify, on wherever you listen to us. It always helps us to get a little bit up the charts to get some more people interested in the topics of mobility design. And you will back, we'll hear back from us in around a couple of weeks' time with our next guest that we will announce then very shortly. And until then, take good care and thanks a lot. <laughs>